Okay, so now you're signed. Well, you're still signed to Def Jam with yeah. Jay-Z as the president. Yeah. You still don't have an album out. Nope, not an album. You got mixtapes out. You got hit singles. Features. Features. All of that. Videos. All of that. Videos. Yeah. With no album. No album. So is there some tension that, are, that starts to happen between you and Jay at this point? Nah, no tension. Uh, Well... I told you, we talked about the Neo part, right? Yeah. Because uh, everything was smooth. And I think the, um, I was, I really, uh, he really looked out because I was over budget. Right. You like, spent, you spent 900000 Yeah. <laughs> How do you spend 900000 I mean, because this is the thing. When we got like, when you're dealing with like seven artists and so much confusion up there at the label, it doesn't matter who budget is open. If we, if all seven of us got to fly to Cali and we need seven rooms and seven flights, mm -hmm. then PD Crack budget open, we got to use that. And then if a Chris and Eve budget is open, we all flying there on that. It's not no time for all the, to break it all down. We just gonna use that budget, fly all of them out there. They state property. Okay. So I didn't fuck that nine hundred up myself. I may have fucked up less than half. 450. But remember, we got seven people. Okay. And that's that goes for all of us. We all used to fuck each other budget up. So mm -hmm. that's how the nine got fucked up. Okay. But, uh, but Jay, uh, he opened the budget back up for me. And I had went to um, Miami to go try to complete the album. But um, I think, honestly, the thing was, now looking back, when I was really ready, they weren't ready. And then when they were ready, I, I wasn't focused and the timing was wrong for me, and the chemistry just wasn't right. So uh, I just, I guess Jay made a decision not to push the shit no more because he put one single out, I think, like not even officially put it out. He like white labeled it to DJs. And uh, I guess he didn't get the reaction that he wanted. And after that, I just never heard nothing else from, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know how that go. They stop answering the phone. And the communication gets slow, mm -hmm. and you know what's up. Okay. Yeah. So, so you end up actually dissing Jay Z at one point. Yeah, kind of, sort of. Yeah, I was talking shit. You were talking yeah, shit because I was upset. You know. Well, you you were you were talking about calling your album "Camel Face Hunting Season." Nah, I never said no. that. Yo, <laughs> where, where, where did that come and from? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like backsliding and that. This one, my space was out. And somebody had posted that on my page. Somebody had made that up, that cover, and posted it. And at the time, it was like right on the money for me. I'm like, that was I entertained it. They're like, yo, check this shit out, crack. I'm like, oh, let me get that. I start posting it, and niggas like, yo, that's the new project. But that wasn't supposed to be no album or nothing. Okay, but you were still co-signing it. I was co-signing it, yeah. Okay. Jay-Z calls you a psycho. Right, yeah. Jay-Z said... And when, he, when they asked about you, he said, it's difficult because I've done so much for them. I gave everybody a shot. Everybody got a chance to sit at the table and make something. So whether you parlay that into something or let that go away, you know, that's pretty much on you. So if I'm not doing anything tomorrow or the next day, you should be cool with that. Right. I agree with him. You know what I'm saying? I do. I think that's a fair statement. I do. And, uh... See, this is the thing. I'm willing to take uh, responsibility for when I was bullshitting. You know what I'm saying? And I guess I just can I could contribute it to me bullshitting at the time when the opportunity was right there. So I ain't going to argue with that. He did. He gave everybody a dope opportunity. He didn't owe you anything? At all. I think he did. They gave us more than... We got, we got the shot of a lifetime. You know what I'm saying? And even with... Whether things went good or bad, I still think it turned out to be a good thing because it just made me a part of, it gave me the opportunity to make my name be heard worldwide and build a fan base to this day. And still, I still got opportunity to this day. I'm here right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you did you did at least one diss song about them? Or was it two or? I, I don't know. I be dissing niggas. When I go in, I, I might have did a few. Okay. It ain't no such thing as a diss song. It's like whatever I'm writing around that time, uh, you in it. You know what I'm saying? Well, you, you had something called uh, I'm Sorry? Yeah, but that was more being playful. And that wasn't even a diss song towards him. That was more of an explanation to the fans for them asking me, like, yo, what's going on, man? What's up? What's up with the album? What's up with Jay? And that's just, that was more so to show them, uh, like, 
oh well. Because it was like, that was like the little theme of it. Like, have, have you seen him? Tell me, have you seen him? It's basically saying like, oh well. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't no big deal. It wasn't a diss. It was just like, it's water under the bridge. Don't worry about that shit. It's no big deal. Did you talk to Jay after that? After um, you left Def Jam? Nah. That was it? That was it, yeah. And I was really comfortable with that too, because I never wanted to be somewhere where as though I don't want to fight for if you don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Want me around. I don't want to be there. I'm never going to push myself in any situation. I got to be welcome. I got to be wanted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm a Libra. That's how we work. 